Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. The Giza pyramids have stood proudly for thousands of years. They've survived three turbulent intermediate periods of ancient Egyptian history. They survived the Middle Kingdom, the New Kingdom and Late Period. They've withstood interest from treasure hunters and explorers, including the ancient Egyptians themselves, the Greeks, the Romans, the Arabs and Western explorers. And although many of the outer casing stones have fallen or have been removed, these pyramids are in a remarkable state of preservation for their age. Each of the three main Giza pyramids is unique. Each one has a story to tell, and although it's often overlooked in favour of the larger pyramids of Khufu and Khafre, the smaller Menkore pyramid is worthy of our attention. From the outside it really is quite striking, and that's because of the granite casing stones that are still in place today. Diodorus Siculus said the bottom 15 courses were cased in granite, whilst Flinders Petrie counted 16. Either way, it means that around a quarter of the height of the pyramid was covered with this hard stone. Harder than the usual Tora limestone we often find on many Old Kingdom pyramids. The Menkore granite casing stones are finely jointed, and looking at pictures posted on the Aceda Project website, the cutting and fitting of the granite is really quite astonishing. The ancient Egyptian masons were masters of stonework, and the Pyramid of Menkore is a fantastic example of their capabilities. In a video I made in June 2021, titled Why the Giza Pyramids are Park Hasting Granite, I believe the reason the bottom 15 or 16 courses of the Menkore Pyramid and also the first one or two courses of the Khafre Pyramid are cased in granite, is simply for flood defence, something I still stand by. The burial chambers in these two pyramids were at or below ground level, and finely jointed granite casing stones would have protected the pyramid from surface runoff water or flash floods from storms. Water that would follow the natural topography of the Giza Plateau, and yes there is a slight gradient, and due to the ferocity of Giza storms, even witnessed in the modern era, the surface runoff water does have the potential to damage objects and structures in its path. Limestone is easily eroded, it can be porous and permeable, and it deteriorates faster than granite. The Old Kingdom was a relatively wet period for ancient Egypt, and we know about the surface runoff damage at Giza because it did cause major damage to the first valley temple of Menkore, as discovered by George Reisner. We know that a desert flash flood streamed down the northern side of the Menkore Causeway and washed out the centre of the first temple's western wall, destroying both the offering hall and portico. The valley temple was abandoned soon after, but it was renovated a few hundred years later, probably by Pepi II of the 6th dynasty. Please watch my video from 2021 to learn more about the Old Kingdom climate, the risk of surface runoff flash floods, and why I think the Menkore and Khafre pyramid granite casing stones were primarily for flood defence. But the main purpose of this video is to explain the outer surface of some of the Menkore granite casing stones. Before I go further, it's important to note that most of the casing stones are unfinished, and still have a very rough outer appearance. There is evidence Menkore died before the pyramid's completion, and as well as quickly finishing the pyramid itself, the Menkore Valley Temple, with its megalithic stone foundations that are very similar to the Khafre Valley Temple, was also quickly finished in mud brick, likely by Menkore's successor Shepseskaf. But whether we're looking at an unfinished or finished casing stone, we do often see a strange outer appearance on the granite. It looks like it's flaking, like there is some kind of rind on the outside that's coming away. Some have speculated that what we're looking at is heat damage, maybe from some kind of solar or cosmic cataclysm. Some think it's a product of some mysterious technology that was used to cut them, 
and some think it's a product of a geopolymer granite mixture, and it proves that these stones are artificial and not quarried. But none of that is correct. The truth behind the outer surface appearance is, I'm afraid, more mundane, and it is very easily explained. It's all because of natural weathering, a standard geological process. Because of environmental factors, granite is susceptible to chemical weathering. The rock is made up of a number of minerals like quartz, orthoclase feldspar, plagioclase feldspar, biotite mica and so on, and the different minerals react differently with the environment. Granite is hard and strong compared to sedimentary rocks like limestone, but it isn't weathering resistant, not by a long shot. The surface layer or rind of the granite casing stones are found to be discoloured, and this is from oxidation and chemical leaching. This rind that can be found on granite all over the world can also be referred to as a shell, a sheet, scales and so on, and it all depends on how it looks. Weathering rinds can be found on all kinds of igneous rock and are extremely common on granite. Water and oxygen get inside the crystalline structure through microjoints on the surface. At Giza they still get rain, there is groundwater, dew and surface runoff, and such water won't be pure H2O but will contain a number of impurities. The natural impure water reacts with the minerals on the surface of the granite, as well as inside microjoints, and also minute cavities that are left on the blocks after being cut. When chemical reactions start, the minerals get altered, and then more microcavities and joints appear, and the processes expand across the rock. Depending on a whole host of environmental factors, the thickness of the weathering rind can be anything from a few millimetres to many centimetres. During the process, plagioclase crystals turn into gibbsite kaolinite, biotite can be chemically altered to vermiculite. It's also been noted that the breakdown of biotite can lead to the formation of grus, which is an accumulation of angular coarse grain fragments resulting from the disintegration of granite surfaces through chemical weathering. Also, due to chemical weathering, granitic rocks can even expand and bulge. In some places, weathering rinds can be seen very clearly when you smash open a granite boulder or rock. In cross-section, you can see the developed rind quite clearly. So, granite can weather into flakes or can crumble and it can also have a mottled texture, and it's all because of natural geological processes. The rind we see on the outside has a different composition to the parent granite, but it forms from reactions that are taking place in the minerals that make up the granite. Granite and all rocks exposed to the elements and atmosphere will all naturally break down over time. It's just that igneous rocks like granite break down a lot slower than sedimentary rocks, which are more affected by physical and biological weathering, but also chemical weathering as well. We see examples of chemical weathering at the Menkore Pyramid, the Khafre Pyramid, at the Khafre Valley Temple, and also at the unfinished obelisk at Aswan. And so, it is important to understand the science when observing these rocks. So, if someone says that this is possible heat damage from a solar flare, or maybe the high temperatures associated with a cosmic impact, well, it does sound exciting but it's not correct. There is no evidence of extreme heat damage at the Menkore Pyramid, and this is all just natural weathering. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, Please like the video and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.